wanted to ask Coach just obviously looked like, you know, Chris was better, but, um, you know, you didn't, you didn't play in the last 934. I guess maybe just maybe speak on that and then how you thought the game, you know, unfolded that, that second half of Lakers obviously made that push. Yeah, I thought he was laboring a little bit. Um, and then he fell. And, you know, I didn't know if he got hit in the personal area or if he fell on his shoulder, but he looked like he was holding it the way he was the other night. And then Cam came in and gave us a lot of energy and juice and shot making. And so I just decided to go with that group. And as, as far as the game, the last five minutes of the third and, and, and most of the third, um, we, we lost a great deal. We didn't come out with the energy that we needed to to start the third. And the last five minutes uh, really hurt us. Uh, we're, we got smashed on the boards tonight. Um, they, they had 15 offensive rebounds. They got to the line. I and mean, if you look at the shooting percentages, neither team shot the lights out of the ball. But we got 58 points in the paint. And um, there was a segment in the second half where it was just paint drive after paint drive, and we didn't show a ton of resistance. And then in that last, you know, nine, eight, nine minutes of the game, uh, before all the emotional stuff took over, you know, I thought we started to play a little bit better. But you know, give them credit; they they were physical the whole night. They attacked the paint the whole night. We just didn't give them a ton of resistance in the paint. Next is Ramona Shelburne with ESPN, followed by Catherine Fitzgerald. Yeah. Hey, Monty, do you do you have you got to have you had to talk to Chris yet after the game to see if he re-injured himself or? Um... Just kind of in that on that play with campaign, I think he got hit on that free throw that LeBron missed. No, um, I do you have an update on that? Okay. Um, no, what, do you, what do you what do you say to what do you, what do, what does it do when when you know, he looked like he was he was okay in the first half? He was doing some things, but in the second half when he's not out there, how do you how do you what do you say to your guys about just keeping it going and and you know doing it even when he's not able to be out there with him? Well, we we have a style of play that we we try to implement no matter who's on the floor. Now, granted, it's Chris and he's been the architect all year long. But I thought Cam Payne came in and, and did some really nice things from shot making to attacking the paint. Our defense um, in the second half, we gave up 66 points. I mean, that, that's a lot of points. And most of it was in the paint. So th that was the deal. You know, whether Chris is out there or not, we got to play better defense than we did in the second half. Next is Catherine Fitzgerald with the Arizona Republic and then Anthony Slater. Monty, to follow up on that last bit a little bit, you mentioned the third quarter as well. Just what happened that led to that swing? Is there anything you can pinpoint in particular? We didn't start well. There's two games in the row. We didn't start third quarter as well. Um, executing our stuff, and then we just allowed so many paint touches. LeBron was in the paint the whole, seemed like the whole third quarter. Every time he was in the game, whether it was transition or the sideline pick and roll, there wasn't a ton of resistance. Um, we gave up two 30 point quarters back to back in the second half. Like that's, that's not something we've done all season long um, is, is consistently allow teams to just run the same play and get to the basket. We just didn't show, I've said it already, a ton of resistance in the paint. Next is Anthony Slater with the athletic and then Sierra Santos. Yeah, Monty, I, I mean, I know you've mentioned that both teams didn't necessarily shoot well, but I think Jay is something now like two of 21 or something like that from three in this series. How necessary is it going to be for some of those fringe guys to just hit open jumpers for you guys to, to score enough in this series? I mean, it's a bunch of our guys who aren't shooting well. I mean, Cam Johnson was one for six. We're not getting Mikhail enough shots. Um, you know, it's it's important to space the floor for, for both Chris and DA to have those guys making shots. So we're due. That's that's the part I'm looking forward to is we're, we're due to have a, a breakout game shooting the ball. Next is Sierra Santos with Fox 10, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Similar type of question, Monty. As far as Devin goes, there was a, a stretch where he wasn't able to get any shots to fall. How much do you credit that to that just being kind of an off night? Not necessarily when you look at the stat line, it seems like that. But how much do you credit that to the, their defense or him having an off night? Well, they've been the number one defense in the league all year long. So when you have two 30-point games and play the way he's played, they're going to try to do some things to take him out. Um, he missed some shots tonight, but they, they were trying to speed him up and they, they ran 
two guys at them all night long. That, that's a tough way to play. Even when we weren't in pick and roll, there was always someone there at the rim or in the paint to cut him off. And if we're not making shots around him, then it just makes it tougher on him. So he'll bounce back. Next is Dwayne Rankin, followed by Ramona Shelburne. Coach, you, you kind of made reference to it when you said it kind of got emotional at the end and then chippy with Devin getting ejected for the flagrant two and then Jay getting into it with Dennis. But I thought maybe some of that started with, with LeBron dribbling on Jay and that whole sequence. What, what did you mention anything? Has that been just, did you guys discuss that at all after? We talked about it all season long. You know, when we're the way we play, some of the press that we've gotten, when we play well, teams are going to try to get under our skin. And we have to be able to weather that. That doesn't mean you, you know, you're a punk or, or a doormat, but we have to consistently try to stay in the game, stay with our game plan. And it's tough at times when you feel like you're being fouled or, you know, somebody's doing something that you don't think is right. But we've shown that when we can stay steady with our po poise and emotions, uh, we can weather that tonight. I didn't think we did it uh, that well. It, it was a, it wasn't a close game, but we got it in reach. And in those moments, all of our guys know we have to be better. And we talked about it and our guys agree. Got time for three more. Next is Ramona Shelburne with ESPN and then Greg Moore. Thanks, Mont. Um, hey, you know, you in game one, the, the, the cameras caught you in one of the timeouts saying, you know, we don't want to be here in July saying, what if we did this or what if we did that or this is the reason why we're going to win or lose? Um, you know, so much of Chris's career, he's had these injuries in the playoffs where it just feels really cruel. It feels really, uh, man, he's, you know, why does he get hurt right now, especially with the season he's had and the season you've had? What do you, what do you tell him, you just even personally, of how to get through this, this kind of situation again? Hmm. Well, probably not the guy to talk to about cruel stuff. I, I know what cruel is. And so it's just basketball. I know how bad he wants to win, but at the end of the day, um, we get paid to do what we do. He's got a beautiful wife and children. He's got a, he has a Hall of Fame career. He's handled these these things well, and, and I don't doubt that Chris will will come through this stronger and better. But what we're going through right now is not the worst thing in the world. Now, as it relates to his career and legacy, it is hard, and I get that to to be where he is and how he's played for us and, and not be able to play at the highest level. Um, that That's hard, but Chris is mentally strong. He, he'll be able to handle it. He'll be able to help us the right way. Final two are Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic and Kent Somers. Thanks, man. Uh, Coach Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. It's a tough loss, of course. The frustration, the chippiness, the physical stuff. Is that a result of you guys being frustrated in the way you're playing? Or is that something the Lakers are doing to you? I think a combination of their physical style is, is for sure. It gets, you know, they get after teams. But I, I thought our lack of shot making messed with us early. We, we just couldn't make shots. And I thought that frustrated us a bit. That happens to every team. Um, and they physically, you know, get after you. They're, they're, they killed us on the boards. They attack the paint. Um, and once I see the film, I'll probably come up with three more things. So. It's not anything we haven't dealt with, and it's not anything we haven't bounced back from. So we, we've, it's a series. It's 2-1. You know, we have a lot of basketball to play, and, and we can learn from this. Final question is Kent Somers with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, Monty, you mentioned that some of your guys struggling. Do you, offensively, do you like the shots they're getting? Do <laughs> you feel like they're open looks? And, and is any part of that kind of a residual effect from what what Chris has had to deal with the last couple couple of games? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 from the eye test, haven't seen the game yet, but it looks like we're getting relatively good shots, open shots. Uh, books shots are under duress, but I think the rest of our guys are getting good shots. And it could be a byproduct of, of their defense and, and not having Chris be what we normally expect from Chris and have seen on a night in, night out basis. That can't affect us, but all that doesn't affect your defense. You know, we, we, we're a better defensive team than we showed in the second half. And um, you know, in the second quarter, we held them to 16 points, but we only scored 12, you know? So the, <laughs> the shot making, as Coach Van Gundy would say, it's a make or miss league. You have to be able to knock down shots so you can set your defense 
And, and when you have a set defense, you're much better. First up is going to be Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports. Hey, Book, it, it was 35 points in the middle two quarters for you guys. Did you like the looks that you guys were creating as an offense and the ones you were getting for yourself? Can you take us through those quarters for you guys offensively? In what quarter did you say? Uh, the second and the third combined. Um, you know, offensively is, you know, that's that's not our problem, you know. I think, you know, our offense always starts um, – when we guard, when we defend better. Um, and I have to look back and watch the film, but just thinking right out the third quarter, you know, when they got it going, you know, if we're taking the ball at the net every play, it's, it, it's tougher for us to, you know, get out in transition and, you know, get to our advantages. Uh, yeah, this is you know, Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Evan, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic, tough loss, obviously. Tell me what was the source of your frustration when you got into it with Schroeder at the end? Um, I mean, we're losing the game. Um, and we want to win. Next up is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, and this is a two-part of one. We know that you're not a dirty player, but Anthony Davis is saying that that was a dirty play. And just wanted to get your, if you had any response to that. And then two, what do you feel like you guys can do in terms of, you know, getting back in this series? Uh, win the next game, you know, will put us in, in a better position. Um, and, and that's that, you know, that's, that's one game. Um, we're down 2-1 now um, and we move on to Sunday. Next is Catherine Fitzgerald with the Arizona Republic followed by David Chenolato. Hey, Devin. Um, Monty, when we just talked to him, was saying how, you know, two games in a row, you guys struggling a bit at the start of the third quarter. Can you pinpoint anything that's happening there? I think they come out, you know, ultra aggressive. Um, I think LeBron got downhill a couple times to start the quarter. Um, we got some easy ones on the rim. All right, first off, um, Chris Paul. So I think we just have to protect our paint. Next up is David Cinellato with Italy. Hey, Chris. hey there, Davide here from La Gazzetta dello Sport in Italy. Uh, what is the difference for you uh, with Chris Paul playing, you know, with a shoulder injury? Uh, how does your role change? What do you need to do more uh, maybe to, you know, get more points? He score a little bit less than usual. Yeah, I think I should have to take the load off him a little bit. Um, I mean, it's obvious. Uh, the day. But why he's out there, you know, just take the pressure off him a little bit. Um, get him some clean looks. He had some early that got us going. Um, but, you know, take over the, you know, the creating role for him a little bit. Next up is Nicole Jarena from Puerto Rico. Hi, Debbie. Hey. What do you think, hi. What do you think was the biggest challenge with the physicality of the game? The biggest challenge of the physicality? Yes. <laughs> Um, I think I think we should have to be ready for it. Um, I mean, we're three games in now. You know, we have a lot of film to go over um, and look after. But you know, I think we got out re out rebounded by 14, 15 rebounds tonight, which is tough. Um, so, like I said, it's just back to protecting our paint. You know, I think that's where a lot of their points are generated, and a lot of their offense goes to that. Uh, just curious, a how does the shoulder feel it looked like you you might have re-injured it and, and what were you able to do in his treatment to get back to at least to this point with the shoulder um just treatment all day all day every day trying to get it right and did you did you re-injure yourself on that play that in the in the fourth with with cam was that did you re-injure it at that point or no no i got need in the nuts okay just making sure <laughs> thanks chris next it's it. gonna be Next is going to be Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports. Hey, Chris, what is giving you the trouble the most with the shoulder? Is it passing, dribbling, shooting? Is it anything in particular? I don't know. Just got to figure it out. Playoffs. Everybody a little banged up. I got to figure it out. <clears throat> Next up is Ramona Shelburne with ESPN. Hey, Chris, what do you – you've had these happen in the playoffs, these kind of injuries, and it's – you know, there's a there's sometimes that's just some people think it's like, guess why does this happen to you? You know, what do you, how do you handle this? Just this, you know, these ill-timed injuries like this. Get through it, get through it. Um, 
it is what it is. You control what you can control. Um, I know I do everything on a daily basis, daily basis to prepare myself uh, to be ready to play. And when things happen, they happen. And you just, you got to overcome and get through it. Next is David Cianolato from Italy, followed by Anthony Slater. Hey, Chris. Um, obviously, for this team, you're not just important as a player, but also with your leadership. How can you help your team both when you are on the floor and off the floor? Uh, just try to be vocal. Um, try to match it with the energy. You know, we got to stay locked into the game plan. Guys playing hard, competing. We got to try to, you know, limit uh, their free throw attempts. Um, you know, they're shooting a lot of free throws uh, last game, tonight. And, I mean, if I was a betting man, 11, 11 games in a row. 11 games in a row. Final two questions are Anthony Slater with The Athletic and Gina Mizell. Did it? Did your shoulder feel better today? Did you, did you feel a little bit looser? Um, and, and how much do you think, you know, two off days coming up will help compared to just the one? Um, it is what it is. Keep trying to get ready. Um, like I said, prepare. Um, always, always, and, and we'll, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Question is, final question is Gina Mizell with sons.com. Hey, Chris, just as a team, um, what do you feel like the biggest priority will be as far as the next two days and, and kind of what you need to clean up and, and get ready for the next one? Uh, look at our defensive coverage, see how we can limit the layups and the dunks. Um, seemed like they made shots sort of later in the game. We had a lot of great looks earlier and um, just keep fighting, keep fighting. All right, DeAndre, we're going to get started with Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic and then Kellen Olsen. Hey, DeAndre, coach was talking about not allowing, you know, the, the frustration of the game to, to get to you guys. Uh, maybe you could just speak to that on how, you know, how important it's going to be to keep composure moving forward in this series. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's playoffs, you know. Um, I don't really know too much about it, but I know uh, being having uh, – you know, being poised throughout this series um, is is key and uh, taking our time and, you know, just sticking together, especially when games like this get lit and amped up. You know, um, we just have to, you know, maintain discipline and, you know, just play the basketball we know. Next up is going to be Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports, and he'll be followed by Gina Mizell. Hey, DeAndre, it seemed like the offense was flowing early, but you guys weren't able to get shots. Did you think you guys were creating good looks in, in those sequences? Yes. Um, one thing about us, we, there was no deflations on our misses. Uh, we, we, were, we were glad where we were getting, what the defense was giving us. We were taking, we were taking advantage of it. And, you know, shots wasn't just falling. So, you know, um, we just got to, you know, really rely on our defense to create our offense. And, you know, um, you know tonight wasn't a night where we really relied on our shooting. This is Gina Mizell with sons.com and then Kent Somers. Hey, DA, you had a double-double tonight, so maybe it's unfair to ask you a rebounding question and how you guys can be better, but just that was such a key thing in, in game one. It got you guys out in transition. It just kind of created the, the faster pace. So just as a team, what can you guys maybe recapture or try to recapture just to, to get that rebounding definitely, advantage a little bit better? Definitely keep crashing the glass. Um, you know, keep attacking it. Uh, you know, our guys, we got we got life sizes, you know, to help me down there. Um, you know, just keep doing that. And I think we we got beat on the boards today. That was a big part of it too. Um, you know, uh, you know, just next game, just maintaining physicality and you know, just attacking the glass every time, helping your friend out, helping your teammate out. Next is Kent Summers with the Arizona Republic, followed by David Chenolato. Yeah, there were uh you know, before the series, a lot of talk about what some of the young sons who'd never been in this position would bring. I mean, do you feel like personally you've answered those questions in, in these three games? And, and is it just a, I know the playoffs are a motivation, but just the fact that you're playing the Lakers and, and that big lineup, does that factor into it too for you? Um, I mean, it's a big opportunity that we're in the playoffs. And, you know, we showed that the work that we've all put in, you know, 
the stuff that we've went through, the adversity that we've went over, you know, it brought us here, you know. Um, now it's just time to really just maintain and just play the best basketball we can play at the highest level. You know, not really look at lineups and what teams throw at us, but, you know, just playing, doing what we do would help this guy here. Simple as that. Final two questions are going to be David Chinolato from Italy and Catherine Fitzgerald. Hey, DeAndre, David here. Um, for you personally, uh, what about this playoff experience? Are, are the playoffs like you expected them to be? Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, the fans, the fans definitely play a big part in it, um, bringing that energy that I've never been in. Um, you know, you can barely hear yourself throughout the game. And, you know, it just shows you the type of level you have to play at and not really be focused on what's going on throughout the game. Um, I would say this, 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 this is what I really expected, especially on the physical aspect. You know, uh, dudes, um, you know, me, guys playing longer minutes, not, not that normal. Um, you know, uh, playing throughout the whole game, you might not even get a break, but, you know, It, it, it's the type of basketball I've been waiting for, to be honest. Um, I've been training for this, and, you know, we're finally here, so I got to take advantage. Final one is Catherine Fitzgerald with the Arizona Republic. DeAndre, after y'all were more back and forth the first half, what changed in the second half, um, particularly that third quarter? Well, mainly, um, you know, was just trying to get back to our norm. Um, You know, I think coming out of the half, we didn't really start up on the right foot, but, you know, we started to chip down on uh, on possessions. And, you know, we still st stuck together, even though it was still up and down. Uh, we still hung in there. All right, Cam, first up is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Kellen Olsen. Cam, you guys obviously made that push uh, in the, in the – uh in the fourth quarter, was that just a matter of, you know, hey, look, we're not going out like that? Uh, absolutely. Uh, that's just, that's, that's, that's our culture. I mean, we're going we to go down swinging no matter what. Uh, we always feel like we got a chance. Uh, it's always a lot of time in the game left. Um, so, I mean, we always going to keep fighting uh, until uh, it's zero, zero on the clock. Quick follow. Obviously, Devin was frustrated, and then Jay was frustrated. They both were uh, ejected. Can you sense why you know it reached that point? I mean, how chippy did it get out there tonight? It got pretty chippy. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't, it, it's chippy. It's it's, it's a playoffs. It's just, but it was but it's just game three. Uh, we gotta we gotta try best to keep our poise, but. I always got my brother back. Uh, just and honestly, that's that's how the whistle went. That's how I'm gonna roll with that. Next is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports, and then Gina Mizell. Hey Cam, uh, what did you think was ultimately the difference tonight? Monty mentioned the energy in the third quarter, but uh, would you, would you agree with Monty on that? Uh, a little bit to an extent, uh, but honestly, I just feel like we gotta stay locked in as a, as a group. Uh, through the ups and downs, through the adversity. We're on the road. Uh, and for the most part, I always feel like we do good on the road because we're such a tight-knit team. Uh, so, I, like, being on the road never really affected us because of how close we are off the court. So on the court, you know, we always talk and it's feel like we always fine because we look up at the score, it's like we always got an opportunity. We're still in the game. Uh, but I kind of feel like Um, our poise kind of wavered a little bit tonight, and uh, we got to we, we got to get back to the meat and potatoes of our team. Uh, we just we just got to get back to us. Uh, I mean, we also we miss a lot of shots tonight. We we miss a lot of shots that we normally knock down, and uh, feel like we just got to be more aggressive and play 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 Phoenix Suns basketball for a whole 48 minutes. This is Gina Mizell with Suns.com, followed by Catherine Fitzgerald. Hey, Cam, uh, I heard those two fans kind of chirping at you on that, that corner three, and then you seem to kind of be going back and forth with them when you kind of got on your scoring run. Just being in a road environment in the playoffs, how much do you 
thrive on those types of interactions that we haven't had really, you know, throughout the whole season kind of until this point? Uh, I kind of felt like it got me going. Uh, sometimes I, I like that. I like it. Because, uh, I mean, I talk about it all the time. I put the work in. So I love it. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes I need it. Some, I ain't got the energy all the time, but it got me going. Uh, I mean, the atmosphere was crazy. It was fun. Glad they had fans in there. It made the game better. Uh, it's cool. Next up is Catherine Fitzgerald with the Arizona Republic. Um, to follow up on that, actually, I know there is a lot of ways you can interact with someone who's chirping at you. It seemed like maybe you were yelling back, I appreciate you. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> what was your thought process like on that? Like I, uh, like I, like I told Gina, I was like, uh, it got me going. Uh, that was, I think that was the first three I took right there in the corner. I was like, ah, oh, it's off. I like that. <laughs> I like that. They don't believe it. They don't, they don't, they don't believe this game. So I like it. It gets me going. Cam, okay, final question is Gina Mizell. You mentioned just getting back to playing your style as a team for 48 minutes. Just what are the steps that you guys can take in these next two days to kind of make sure that you're you're there um, for, for Sunday's game? Uh, one, get a lot of rest, get a lot of treatment. Uh, it'd be great to have C back at 100%. Uh, I know we don't speak speak a lot about that, but uh, I wish he was out there. I feel like we'll, we'll, we'll look a lot better. Uh, but you know, we're fighting and clawing. Uh, but th these two days are big, they're huge. Get to watch a lot of film, figure out what we gotta do to come back to win game four. So we can go back to the crib and get game five. So it's gonna be a big two days, but it's gonna be a great two days. Uh, time off is good. We need we need C back, <laughs> we need him back, we could use him. But I mean, time off is good to, to regroup and uh, Look at our mistakes, get our legs back under us, um, and just come out fresh for game four.